Today on Aqua Kids. Join the Aqua Kids as they take a trek in the maritime history and learn some skills along the way. Plus, a preview of Drew's latest music video. So, ready to make a difference? Building a better planet starts with you. everyone at home and welcome to another fantastic episode of Aqua Kids. I'm Katie and I'm Drew. On today's show we're headed out to Tuckerton Seaport in Tuckerton, New Jersey. This seaport offers a variety of activities for people of all ages to get excited about maritime history, culture, and the maritime ecosystem. We have a lot to learn today so let's get over there. Okay. Today we're here at the beautiful Tuckerton Seaport in Tuckerton, New Jersey. Founded in 2000, the museum offers a wide variety of exhibits and activities aimed at teaching the public about preserving and interpreting the rich maritime history and artistry of the Jersey Shore. From dressing up like pirates to a touch tank, the museum tries to keep their exhibits fun and interesting. Hey, have any of you seen Drew? Today's first stop, decoy carving. Historically carved from wood or cork, duck decoys are often used in duck hunting to attract real ducks into a desired area. After being carved, sanded, and painted, the duck decoys look eerily similar to real ducks. Oftentimes the decoys are put up for sale, going anywhere from $5 to $1 million. In fact, the most expensive duck decoy ever sold was $1.13 million. So George, tell me, how did decoy carving come about? Decoy carvings came about in America through hunting to feed the families of the settlers that were here. But it originated in Egypt 5,000 years ago. Hmm. But they didn't use decoys as we do in America. They used live birds that were tethered and that lured the ducks to the hunter. Wow. So where did the fake ducks the come from? The fake about? ducks came from the settlers observing the Native Americans, mm -hmm. they would take a stick and put it in the marsh with mm -hmm. a head on it to lure the duck to it. Oh. The settlers advanced it a little bit by carving a whole duck out of wood. So he didn't have to uh, tether it or train it, feed it. Mm -hmm. He ate him. He <laughs> fed his family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what we do today is we make it out of cedar wood right here in New Jersey, the wood of choice. South Jersey is cedar. Oh, okay. Other states, they have pine, oh, whatever. Mm -hmm. But down here in the Barnegat Bay area, 100% cedar. And they never carve their feathers. They paint them, and they painted it with house paint, mixed their own colors. They created an art form and never realized it. So why don't they carve the feathers? If they carve the feathers, this way they say, is at the end of the day, they have a an anchor mm -hmm. that looks like this and a string that goes to the bottom of the bay. He'll float there all day. Yeah. So when the ducks fly by, say, oh, there's my cousin. I want to see him. <laughs> That's what lures him to the bird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, at the end of the day, he puts the weight on top. He'll take it, throw it in his boat. If he did that, it, it damages would break the, the feathers. Feather. Yeah. He'd be up half a night carving Aww. the feathers. Mm -hmm. If he gets a ding on the bird right here, He'll just touch it up with house paint. He goes back to work the next day mm -hmm. because he's a working tool. <laughs> that's the way he is. Well, that's very neat. They have fancier birds, as you can see in the other tables. Um, they're carved feathers. They look nice, but they're not as practical as the ones that New Jersey had in here in South Jersey. Mm -hmm. I see. Are but they, they still? They have other. They have other uh, birds, as you can see up in the top shelf up here, mm -hmm. uh, they have keels on the bottom. They're from New Jersey, but they're not from this area. They're from the Delaware River or the Delaware Bay where the tide is strong and the winds are strong and they need a keel. Oh. Out here in the Barnegat Bay, they didn't need a keel because it was protected by the marsh mm -hmm. 
and it was a shallow bay, relatively shallow. So they never needed one, never put it on. And we're following that tradition to this day. Here, come on over here. Earl's, I'm going to show you how we do this. This is how we did it in the old days. We're following their tradition. With a draw knife, you shape the bird just like this. After a brief lesson on the history of decoy carving, Mira and Selena got a chance to carve some decoys themselves. George taught them how to cut, carve, shave, smooth, and sand the decoys so that they looked like real ducks. One of the cool things at Tuckerton Seaport is this touch tank. Look at this cool horseshoe crab. It was awesome to see just what goes into decoy carving. The decoys really do come out as pieces of art when they're done. You're right. Don't go away. When Aqua Kids returns, we get to see more of what Tuckerton Seaport has to offer. Aqua Kids presents another Aqua Kids pop quiz. There are millions of different species of animals in just the rainforests of South America alone. Can you guess how many different species of butterflies there are in the South American rainforests? Is the answer A, 500 species, B, 1,000 species, or C, over 2,000 species? Don't fly off, I'll reveal the answer after the break. Did you guess how many different species of butterflies there are in the South American rainforests? The answer is C, over 2,000 species. Did you know that the color of a butterfly's wing is produced by the light reflecting off their transparent wings? Who knew? Welcome back to Aqua Kids. We're headed back to Tuckerton Seaport to see what else we can learn about New Jersey's rich maritime history. Up next, we head to the Parsons Clam House. Yar! Hi, Captain Fred. Hi. Wow, what a surprise. <laughs> howdy, howdy. How are you today? Oh, uh, we're just playing in the sand and play we're clamming. See, we're not really clamming, but these clams will show people in the, in the seaport how we catch clams with tongs. So how oh. do you catch Would clams with tongs? Would you like to use the tongs and try to catch a clam? Yes, Why please. Why not? <laughs> okay, here's the tongs. I'll let you go Those are first. fun. Okay, you take one in each hand. Now. All right. Now where you see a little lump like that, there might a be lump. a clam, but there might be not be. But see, yeah, see, try, ooh, that, look at try that, that there, see? Gotcha. One shot and you got him, see <laughs> Yes, I'm a good clammer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. So what's next? What but do we do after this? Can I this? see your clam license or not? No. Uh, sorry, I forgot <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> you, want, you want to try one? Sure, I'll try oh, one. Did, yeah. All right, this looks like a good lump over here. I'd say it might be. Oh. Gotcha. Got there we go. Yes, we're like do. pros. We're experts. Yes, we're doing. We're having a good day today here. Yeah. <laughs> so, what are some other ways to clam? There's, uh, there's tonguing mostly is, um, that's what I do most of the time. But there are several ways to catch a clam. But uh, half, uh, some of them get overboard when the tide's low, oh. and you catch them with your feel them with your feet. And then you slide like step it up around your like leg, that. and then you put him in a little inner tube with a basket in it. If <laughs> you understand, following me, are you? Yeah. And that floats him when you get the basket full. You take it over a little boat and dump it in there. See? Oh, all right. But then there's a scratch race. See this little rake here? Yeah. Now this, when you get overboard and it's about up to here like that, you pull this rake along the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then you feel the clam. Mm -hmm. and then you oh. dig him out of the clam and you turn the rake real quick so, he, so you get him in the basket. See it? Yeah. yeah. That's how you do it. Yep. It doesn't hurt the clams, does it? It doesn't hurt the clams, <laughs> no. When they hurt him was when you open the shell and eat one. I mean, that hurts him a little bit. <laughs> just, <laughs> just try it? All right. Yeah, just, I'll pretend there's clams here. And you go over, turn that thing to keep him in the, in the, in the, in the clam rake. Best. That's it, and then, oh. then the clam's in there. Yep. Hmm. That's one of the, now the treading is another thing, you feel them with your feet when the tide's down. You can't do it when the tide's up because you're, you know, your head will be under. Right. Uh -huh. And they catch them, they slide them up, they're good treaders. They slide them up their leg and get like that and then throw them in a basket. Wow. But you gotta, that takes a lot, you know, to learn that. Oh yeah, yep. is that. So how long have you been clamming? I've been clamming ever since I was in high school or before that. I go wow, out with my wow. father as a little guy, and I, he taught me the most people around here learned it from their fathers, you know. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I learned to clam, and then uh, I uh, started making a living with it. 
just, not just for fun, but uh, I would sell to a dealer. Do you love it? Uh, uh, yeah, I'd miss it if I had to quit. Oh. And I'm 83, but I ain't going to quit yet either. <laughs> Keep <laughs> no, on <sir>. going. <laughs> yeah, it keeps, you, keeps my muscles a little trim, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's uh, most of the people that claim for a living. They had somebody in the family ahead of them that claimed. Oh. Yeah. So clamming's really a family business here on Barnegat Bay. Yeah, I'd say so, but this isn't, this is, see you hear about Barnegat Bay, but Barnegat Bay wasn't where all the clams were. Oh. It's Little Lake Harbor Bay, which is right out here at the mouth of the creek. It's a little from secret there, clams. From there, yeah. it's not Barnegat Bay where the stuff was, it's Little Lake Harbor Bay, because oh, wow. I know, because I've been there. So um, I'll toot my own horn, that's me there clamming. Okay, gals, I want to show you some clam tongs. Look at these. They're so big. And these are them. What do you do with them? And uh, what I do with them, you put them in the bottom of the bay, in the mud or the sand, mm -hmm. and then you go like this, and you feel that clam down in the bottom. Right. And you dig him out, and you get him in the tongs, and you pull the tongs up. You're in a boat now. Mm -hmm. Get the tongs out, and you pick the clams out, whatever's in there. And then you put the tongs back overboard and you try to catch two or three or four more. That must take a lot of muscle for that. I was going to say, it I don't does, know. It, uh, that's it true. does. <laughs> and I'll tell you, you don't go to gym nights after you use these. <laughs> oh, you got to remember that. <laughs> yeah. But it's, uh, it's all labor, most of it. But there's an act to it, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is. You can't just dig him out. You try to work him out that way. See? Right. So it's not all, it's not all muscles. Oh, gotcha. There's a little knack to it, yeah. Yep. Well, Fred, it's so great to see someone who's very passionate about their career. Oh, I am because it's been my living, but not only my living, but uh, it gave me some good workouts. You know, <laughs> I don't have to go to the gym nights, and I. Uh, but uh, it's uh, it's been uh, my life and livelihood, and I sure wouldn't miss it if I had to quit. Mm -hmm. I'm 83 now, and I'm still on it, so I'm <laughs> glad I can, because uh, you know, like I say, if they took come along, took these tongs out of my hand, it would ruin, oh, it would ruin me maybe. There's, the day is coming, but I'm not, I'm going to put it off as long as I can do as long as I can put it off, yeah, yeah. And it's really important to protect the bay to make sure that you can keep clamming for right. as long as possible. Yeah, see, you can't, you can't eliminate the species, there won't be any clams left. Mm -hmm. So we're, we have to throw the little tiny ones back. Right. For tomorrow, for next month maybe, yeah, yeah. Looks like you had a fun time learning how to clam, Katie. I did. I will have to put my new skills to work sometime soon. Aqua Kids will be right back. Hey, you're back. Let's get right back out to Tuckerton Seaport to see what else we can find. Okay. One of the really big problems in the 1800s was shipwrecks. A lot of people lost their lives due to drowning in the sea. But luckily, in 1848, someone right here in New Jersey came up with a contraption that could save everyone. So what we're going to do, Katie, is we're going to demonstrate this right now. We're going to use our imaginations. That's the ship that's about to sink, the black ship, right? All right. The black top is the ocean, and your associates ah. are over there on dry land. So people would drown within sight of land. So let's step out of the way and let them bring the breeches buoy out to the ship. All right. We're going to throw you alive! Over 178,000 people are saved with this method. Wow. Save us! Save us! We're dying! Most of them are immigrants and ships that are overloaded, that are creaking because they're too, uh, too old. We're dying! Help us! Some brave volunteers <laughs> on the beach baby. send out a line. Save our Only baby! Only last descended! <laughs> Help me! They want freedom. They want to be in America. They want to be immigrants. Through the raging surf and the wind and the snow. And our little brave immigrant gets in the ring. And then at first a volunteer group, later a group that becomes the Coast Guard, would pull. Bring the baby the signal, in. Bring the baby in. No, no, you have, yes. Right, bring there that you baby go. in. <laughs> Through the surf. But waves. Now this is the summer, but this would be the winter. There'd be waves and Don't crash. Oh no! That baby almost drowned. <laughs> Whoa! Let's get that baby in. Now is the United States Life Saving Service still in practice? No, it was taken over by the U.S. Coast Guard in 1915. Oh. So it's a very proud tradition. And as I said, they saved 178,000 people by doing this. That's amazing. 
Katie, on behalf of the immigrant, he would like to thank you, shake your hand for saving right. his life. You're you, welcome, Katie, sir. are his hero. Aw, <laughs> welcome to America. I never knew that the U.S. Coast Guard took over the United States Life Saving Service. I know, how cool is that? Don't go too far. Aqua Kids will be back in a minute. Here's our top story. Museum offers maritime history lesson. Residents of Marquette, Michigan may not know the rich maritime history of the area they live in, but a local museum is trying to change that. The Great Lakes are a vital part of Michigan's history, and the Maritime Museum, located in Marquette, is trying to teach residents about the importance of knowing the area's history. Opening its doors in 1982, the museum offers a variety of exhibits open to the public. From shipwrecks to lighthouses, there is an exhibit for everyone. As Carrie Fry's museum director stated, I think it's important that they know their history. Our shoreline is a beautiful asset, and I don't think a lot of people realize the rich history that goes into it. And really, that Marquette was settled because of the wonderful waterways and beaches that we have here. In addition to the maritime history, Fry's Museum hopes to teach people about the importance of protecting and preserving the wonderful things Great Lakes have to offer. I'm Katie with Aqua News, keeping you connected to our planet. Now back to Aqua Kids. <laughs> Well, we had so much fun today, didn't we, guys? Yeah, of course. I had a great time. Guys, wait. Don't leave. I was only kidding about being a pirate. Really? Yar. I was disappointed that you guys left me to be a pirate. Aw, oh, come on, Drew. <laughs> At least you're back now. Yeah, it's true. Plus, I got to see a ton of cool things while I was wandering around. I don't know if you could be what we saw. From decoy carving to life-saving, we sure learned a lot about the maritime history and culture of the Jersey Shore. That's right, Katie. And everyone working at the museum was there for the same purpose, to educate the public about the importance of the marine environment to the Jersey Shore. They helped us to remember that everyone can do their part to keep our planet green and blue. And so can you. So visit our website to follow us on our journey. And learn how you can come along with us, so together we can keep the world and the water a great place to play and explore. And we'll see you next time on, on Aqua, Aqua Kids. Kids. All right, well, I'm going to go run and get my drumsticks. <laughs> okay.
my radio.